Um, now we're going to go over the structure. All right. I used to give this as a suggestion, and then people ignored it um, because I told them they could ignore my suggestions. Um, so now I just say we're going to do it. Okay. Number one, when you sit down, um, I would suggest that you have kind of somebody in charge. Pick an in charge. It can change um, or whatever, but the idea is this person is going to, going to time the whole thing and make sure that you're moving at a good clip. We're going to have five or six people in these writing groups. You're going to have um, about an hour for your workshopping. That means that we really need you to be spending about 10 minutes per person. All right, 10 minutes per person um, means that you're going to have to keep it moving, okay? Uh, and the person in charge, what you can do is you can move them through the phases of this whole thing a little more quickly. You can, uh, they, there's, some of you are gonna be A-type personalities, you'll love this, okay? You can just make everybody do what you say. Um, but the idea is to keep it moving and to make sure if someone gets going on one issue that's going too long, say, well, we really need to move on. So find someone who's comfortable saying that and go ahead and do it. Writing groups should be fun. I don't want to like make a, the, you know, the writing group Nazis in charge of you all. Um, but if you know, there's somebody who's taken the class a few times, maybe put them in charge or you know, something like that. Talk it among yourselves. Uh, you're, you're, you're big kids, you can figure it out. Um, but put somebody in charge, okay? Number two, you're gonna move through the phases of the writing group where you're going to begin with Good things. This is what's working for you. The emotional responses you had, you've got to do this, okay? It's easy to focus on the criticism. You're taught in your English classes to focus on the criticism. The good things are going to be just as important to that writer to know what they are nailing and what they are hitting. Characters that you're enjoying. What narrative parts are making you laugh if it's supposed to be funny or cry if it's not supposed to. Um, your emotional investment here and there, um, where you felt excited, all of these things. Important stuff to get down, okay? Phase two, um, your leader, once that kind of conversation has, has, has died down, is going to move you on to big problems. These are, the, these are larger than a sentence level thing. Don't tell them during the big problems phase um, that, you know, you used the wrong there. Don't tell them that. Unless they do it every week and they don't know the difference between them, um, then, you, then it becomes a big problem. But don't say that. Don't say, oh, you forgot a period here. Ignore that. If, you, if it drives you crazy, which it does some people to not um, be giving people that, print off the document, read it and mark it up, give it to them at the end of the, of the writing group session, okay? All right? Um, and then they get their, their feedback. Some writing groups really like to do that with everybody. Mark up a copy and hand it, hand it back to them. It can be really helpful for all these sentence level things that we won't get time to. Your big problems are, um, you know, what I talked about earlier, where you are bored. It's not like stuff that's like, oh, I would put this book down and throw it out the window. But it's the things, you know, where they're the counterpart to the good things, all right? Talk about that for a little while. And then at the end, you can go ahead, um, and have the leader let them ask, um, ask questions. Don't do this the first couple of times. Then go ahead and move into this and say, okay, do you have any questions? So the person who's been quiet the whole time, and the person can say, um, he felt this about this character. Could you guys talk more on that and see? Because you know, if they have a discussion about it, then good. Um, and you get more feedback, all right? So these are three phases. One person's in charge of kind of moving you through them and keeping you going at a good clip. Um, if, you know, your whole writing group decides you want to spend more time and do things longer and have, you know, more submissions, that's okay. But I'm going to suggest we only do that if you're in one of the hardcore writing groups, which I will do in the splitting up of in, in a few minutes here, so that someone doesn't feel embarrassed by being the only one in the writing group who really just only wants to do a thousand words and really does want to get out of here in a reasonable hour, okay? All right, so don't, you know, but I'll give you guys the people who want to have four-hour writing groups. Okay, you're not going to have four-hour writing groups. But who want to be able to go along and um, do 2,000 words and things like that, I'll give you guys the chance to be in a writing group 
that, um, that, uh, that facilitates that. Otherwise, let's try and keep it on task and on, um, at a good pace. Uh, people have places to be, and plus the longer you talk, the more you're going to stray into the prescriptive changes or the, um, or the you know, you, you don't know how to use the progressive tense in this sentence or something like that, I don't know, whatever. Um, the progresso tense, soup. Um, so, does this make sense to everybody? All right, now you may think that I'm harping on this a little bit much, but like I said, a bad writing group can actually be worse for your writing, for your writing um, than, um, than helpful. It can, it can destroy, particularly the discovery writers can get completely cast off course by a bad writing group. And I want you to have a good experience with the writing group. At the end of this course, you may decide writing groups just aren't for you. That's fine. You don't ever have to do one again unless you know you, for some reason, take the class again like some of you insane people have done three years in a row. Um, but, yeah. Um, you are welcome to if you want, but I want the face-to-face. -face. Okay. I find that online writing groups for me are not as effective, mm -hmm. and I want you to practice face-to-face. -face. And that brings up another good thing. I would rather your writing groups be a discussion, okay? A lot of writing groups, particularly with newer writers um, in courses at BYU, it will be like, all right, you have something to say. And they like, go down the line, and each person says something. I would rather you not do that. I would rather you say, have the leader say, all right, who has a good thing? Someone says a good thing, and then you discuss it and say, yeah, I really like that, and I, found, I like this part too because it tied into that. Rather than, okay, what are your good things? Okay, what are your good things? I'd like you to have a, a conversation about it. That does put a more onus on the person in charge because one of your jobs will be make, making sure that everyone has a chance to speak. If there's somebody like me in the writing group who just likes to blab, you're going to have to be like, all right, we haven't heard from Sarah in a while. Sarah, did you have anything you wanted to say regarding this and that sort of thing? So that does put an onus upon you to do that. Everyone be aware of it. If you're naturally a blabber like me, then be aware that you need to make room for everyone else uh, to give things to say. Same goes for the big problems, though. I would rather have it be a discussion. Have someone bring something up, and if you don't agree, say, you know what? I didn't feel that. Have a discussion about it. It's okay. Readers, it's going to be more helpful to the writer to listen to what the readers are saying in a discussion form as you talk about the piece, as opposed to listing off, going through lists of things about the piece, okay? That's kind of a hard dynamic to enforce upon you because it really means you guys have to get comfortable with each other and um, you'll do this more and more as the semester progresses. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah. Any other questions about the writing groups? Yes? You mentioned bringing in people outside the class. Yes. Um, now, we can't bring them here, obviously, with us, but what, what do you find is the best way to do that? Is to email it to people, or? Yeah, or, um, I mean, I have frequently had people bring their spouses to the writing group portion of the class. Um, you're fr free to do that if you want. In fact, the writing groups tend to get, as the class progresses, um, not all of them get this way, but people start bringing treats. Uh, people start ordering pizza or whatever and having their writing group um, and things like that. That's fine too. Bringing in your spouse, um, if the whole writing group's okay with having another person. The problem is your writing groups are going to be so tight at the 10 minute mark that more people is probably not necessarily going to be more helpful to you uh, because, you know, we give about 45 minutes per piece or a half hour in my writing group. Plenty of time to talk for everybody. Uh, but at 10 minutes, eh. So. You know, be, be careful about that. Don't, we don't want these writing groups to get to be like 20 people with like your roommate's friend coming along and things like that. Um, in my writing group, we email submissions to everybody, to each other on Monday, um, and then we read them all and we meet together and chat about them. So, all right? 